Welcome to another installment of Python Basics exercises. In this video course, you'll practice reading and writing files in Python. Exercises provide an excellent way to strengthen your knowledge and improve your programming skills. By solving our carefully selected exercises, you'll practice writing code, reading other people's code, and communicating your thought process. Through these exercises, you'll put the ideas you've learned in the related course or tutorial into practice and make them stick. For each exercise, you'll follow three steps. First, you'll learn about the exercise. I'll walk you through the relevant instructions so that you can understand the task at hand correctly. Then I'll give you a chance to tackle the exercise yourself. Practicing is the best way to reinforce your knowledge after all. Finally, in a follow-up lesson, I'll share with you my approach showing detailed steps that lead to a working solution. This way, you can compare, learn, and elevate your own understanding. Note that this Python Basics Exercises course is broken up into three sections. The first section contains a few warm-up exercises that will get you to practice reading and writing generic text files in Python. The exercises in the next section focus on handling comma-separated values files, or CSV for short, which are commonly used for storing data in a tabular format. You might have used those files in a spreadsheet program of your choice. The last section in this course is a little challenge that will push you past your comfort zone, letting you rise to the next level. It'll give you a chance to revisit the fundamental Python programming concepts, while providing a summary of how to work with files in Python. As a result, you'll build something meaningful that will make it all fit together. These three sections mirror the original Python Basics course that this one builds on. The related course, which you should watch first, has a similar title minus the exercises part. If you haven't watched it yet, then please follow the link listed in the description below or click the link on the corresponding slide. You can download the slides and other resources, including sample code, by expanding the supporting material dropdown, which you'll find just below this video. I'll be using IDLE, or the integrated development and learning environment that comes with Python to demonstrate my approach to solving the exercises. So make sure that you're familiar with the tool. If you've gone through other Python Basics courses, then you've already seen IDLE in action. If not, and you want to know more, then you can check out these associated courses that cover getting started with IDLE. Having said that, if you're here outside of the Python Basics courses, then feel free to use whatever tool you like to solve the upcoming coding exercises. Before you get started, let me share a few useful tips that will help you tackle the exercises, or maybe even solve actual programming problems that you might come across later at work. It's always a good idea to read the instructions carefully to make sure that you understand the problem correctly. Try to break a bigger problem into smaller tasks that are more manageable and easier to solve. Take your time to think through the problem and come up with a plan before writing any code. It can spare you from implementing something that you wouldn't need in the first place. When writing code, Take small steps to help you focus on one small task at a time. Keep your code clean and easy to follow by giving variables descriptive and meaningful names. It will help you and others understand the code more quickly. Occasionally, you can use comments to explain difficult or surprising fragments of code. Try to explain why rather than the what. Last but not least, validate each step as you go. In the long run, this approach can reduce the time you'll spend debugging your code when it stops working as expected. All right, that was the course overview. I wish you good luck and I'll see you in the next lesson. In this exercise, you're going to save the names of starships from the popular Star Trek franchise in a text file named starships.txt. Note that the file should be saved in your home directory, which is your personal folder that the operating system allocated to the corresponding user. Also, each word in the file should be kept on a separate line. You can stop the video now, think about this task and code your own solution.
When you're ready, proceed to the next lesson where you'll see my solution that you can compare with yours. In this lesson, I'll show you the solution to the first exercise in this section, as well as my thought process behind it. I already have idle open with the interactive Python shell on the left and the instructions on the right to keep me reminded of what I need to do. Since this is going to be a file with Python source code, I wrap the instructions in triple quotes to define a string literal using Python syntax. Let's go ahead and save this file as exercise underscore 01 underscore 01. That will allow me to quickly run the code that I'm about to write and observe its results in the interactive shell over on the left. First of all, let's acknowledge the fact that there's no one correct way of solving any programming problem. Even though Python advocates for having only one way to do it, there are usually multiple different paths that ultimately lead to the same outcome. So if your solution is a little bit different than mine but still works, then that's perfectly fine. In practice, those alternative paths can involve different trade-offs that need to be taken into account. For instance, it's quite typical for a faster solution to require more memory. Conversely, one that uses less memory will often sacrifice the execution speed. Now, the instructions that you see here don't specify how you're supposed to store these starship names in Python. You could use a list of strings, for example, or a single string delimited with new lines or other characters, or maybe even some more sophisticated language construct available in Python like an enumeration class. In this case, I think that using a multi-line string literal seems the most intuitive and suitable. So I will quickly grab these and declare a variable named text just below the instructions. Then I'll assign a string and close in triple quotes, which allow me to include multiple lines of text like so. However, because triple quotes preserve white space characters, this string actually includes unwanted blank lines around the starship names. You can see this when I execute the corresponding code snippet in Python's interactive shell on the left. There is a new line character at the beginning as well as the end of the string. Probably the quickest way to suppress them is by formatting the string literal so that it starts on the same line as the variable it belongs to and so that it ends on the last starship name. However, I prefer to use an explicit line continuation represented by the backslash character. This might be a subjective thing, but it makes the string look a bit better to my eyes. Some people prefer to rely on the so-called implicit line continuation, which is yet another way of defining such multi-line strings in Python. But I'm not going to cover it in this course. Okay, now that we have a variable with starship names, it's time to save them in a text file. To do that, I'll import the path object from the pathlib module. And at the very bottom, I'll define a path pointing to a file named starships.txt. Notice, by the way, that I'm quoting the file name because I want to define a Python string. According to the instructions, the file should be located in my home directory, which I can conveniently find by calling home on the path data type. Let's assign this path to another variable so that I can refer to it later. Path seems a descriptive enough name. Now, using this path, I'll open a new file in the writing mode because we want to write to it. I'll also specify the character encoding as UDF8, which is always a good practice, although in this case, it doesn't really matter. Finally, to make sure that Python will eventually close this file, reclaiming the associated resources to the operating system and flushing the internal buffers, I'll wrap this line in a width statement. Inside that width statement, I can print our text variable, but instead of printing to the screen or the standard output stream, I'll specify the file to write to. I can now save this module and run it to verify if there are any problems. There's no output, which is a good sign. That means we didn't have any errors, therefore we can assume the file was written successfully. 
However, to be completely sure, let's try to open this file. On Unix-like operating systems, including macOS and Linux, you can refer to your home directory using the tilde, which is this little squiggly line character here. It's just a shorthand notation for your home directory, which you can use instead of typing out the entire path. The file we're looking for is named starships.txt, so let's open it now. As you can see, there's an extra blank line at the end of the file, which is the result of calling the print function. By default, the print function includes a trailing newline character, which you can disable by specifying the optional end parameter with an empty string as a value. While this will work, you can achieve the same result using even fewer characters, that is by calling the write method on your file object directly, passing the text variable as an argument. Let's save it one more time and restart the module. Now let's open the same file again. And there's no blank line anymore. Apart from that, each word sits on a separate line, just as instructed. I think that pretty much concludes this exercise. See you in the next one. Now, your task is to read the file that you created in exercise 1 and print each starship name on a separate line, ensuring there are no extra blank lines between them. Remember to specify the correct path to the file in your home directory. Go ahead, give this exercise a try, and confront your solution with mine in the next lesson. Solving this exercise should take less time than before because some of the steps needed to complete it actually overlap with the ones that we've already covered in the previous exercise. More specifically, reading a file in Python isn't all that different from writing to it. You need to first open it using the right mode, so you can initially repeat the same code that you just wrote. Start by importing the path object, and then specify the actual path to your home directory, followed by the name of the file which you created in the previous exercise, that is starships.txt. You can assume this file exists and you can open it using the familiar with statement, but this time you want to open it for reading, so you'll use the letter R instead of the letter W as the value for the mode parameter. If you're a good citizen, and you are right, then you might as well specify the character encoding as UDF8. Finally, you want to print each line in the file onto the screen. One way to do this is by looping over the lines returned by the readLines method exposed by the file object. You can then print each line to the screen. Even though this looks correct, you should always verify your code through testing. So let's save this file as a Python module named exercise underscore 01 underscore 02 and let's run it. Okay, we can see the Starship names appear correctly, but there are unnecessary blank lines between them, which goes against the last point in the exercise instructions. At this point, you might remember it's the print function that adds an extra newline character at the end of each line by default. We can disable it by specifying an empty string as the value for the end parameter. Let's save the file and rerun it to see if that helps. Indeed, that helps. Now that we verify the code works as expected, we can think if there's anything we can improve about it. For example, the readLines method is greedy, which means that it loads the entire file and splits it into separate lines stuffed into a Python list that could potentially allocate a lot of memory. When your file is large, it may be more efficient to process it line by line instead of all at once like this. In such a case, you can take advantage of the fact that file objects in Python are iterable themselves. If you iterate over the file without calling read lines, then Python will keep feeding you with the next line from the file until there are no more lines or you decide to break out of the loop prematurely. This should still produce the same result, but use much less memory, which can be especially helpful when you work with those larger files. But since the Starships file is tiny, we can actually read it all at once into a Python string instead of a list of lines. 
the file object has a read method which does just that. So instead of printing a line, we can print the whole file. Again, this should work as before. Uh, this simplifies the code even more, making me quite satisfied. I actually like this solution the best. What about you? Did you arrive at something similar? This exercise is only a slight variation of the previous one, so you can reuse bits of code that you might already have. Here, you'll read the same text file again, but you'll only print the Starship names that start with the uppercase letter D. You don't need to worry about error checking, so assume that the file already exists and contains Starship names that start with uppercase letters. Without further ado, let's get to it. As you can see, I went ahead and prepared not just the usual exercise instructions, but also the solution to the previous exercise. This will help speed things up as we'll build on top of it. Now, because each name of a starship that we want to check is kept on a separate line in the file, we need to take a step back and modify the code so that it reads the file line by line. I'm going to iterate over each line in the file and unconditionally print that line, remembering to remove the trailing new line character. Just for fun, I'll do it differently this time. Instead of telling the print function not to append the newline character, I'll strip it from the right end of the line by calling the rstrip method. There's also a corresponding lstrip method, which removes the leading whitespace. On the other hand, calling the strip method will remove both the leading and trailing whitespace characters from the string. Let's quickly save the file and run it to test if there are no errors in the code. Everything seems all right, but we're only interested in seeing the names that start with the uppercase letter D. So that would be Discovery and Defiant. To filter out the other names, we must introduce an if statement before printing the current line, which will check whether that line starts with the uppercase letter D. Don't forget to indent the necessary code block under the if statement to ensure syntactical correctness. This means that Python will only print the line if the condition is satisfied. Let's check it out. There we go. We can see the expected output, which technically ends this exercise. However, I'd like to extend it beyond the basics and think about some corner cases. For example, I can imagine someone writing the Starship names using lowercase letters or mixed case letters, potentially with some extra white space around them. It would be nice to account for that by cleaning the names before checking the condition. You can pause the video now if you want to try implementing this yourself and then resume the video to compare your solution with mine. It'll give you a chance to revisit the knowledge of string manipulation in Python, which was covered in an earlier video course in the same Python basic series or the corresponding chapter in the book. All right, I hope that this wasn't too difficult. Let me now show you what I had in mind. We can take the line, strip all white space characters from both ends of the line, and capitalize it so that the starship name present on that line always starts with a capital letter. Finally, we can assign the result of that operation to a new variable with a descriptive name such as cleaned underscore line, and we can use it for the if condition instead of the original line. This updated code ensures that we won't miss out on any Starship names regardless of how they're written in the file. Notice that we still print the original line though. You can try editing the file by hand to add new Starship names or alter existing ones and then run the code again to observe changes. Okay, let's move on to the next section of this course.